Jack is the uh, came on as a, the first team member, the first first new team member, and uh, Dee Dee Pierce will be coming on shortly. She's the second uh, new team member. Jack is a, a student at USC in business, doing film studies as a minor degree. He's got two minor degrees. Be the guy you told me about with Wonder Reel. Ah no, that's Russell. That's Russell. Okay. So we're, um, we're in partnering discussions with, with Russell Miller, but uh, he's great too. Really wonderful people. I'm waiting for Dee Dee to come on here. And I think she's... And who's Dee Dee? Dee Dee Pierce is a 2006 Teacher of the Year at Santa Clara County Schools. And so she um, came through the Stanford Teacher Education Program and then went to teach high school at um, Mountain View Los Gatos schools. I think uh, Los Gatos High School, maybe, or Los Altos High School, or oh, something like that nearby in, in Silicon Valley. So she's aware of all things going on down there, and, uh, but has moved to Ohio and started a high school, school uh, film festival there. And... Uh, here, here she comes. Yes, yes, Dee Dee, yes. Uh, she's, she's coming on. She just asked me where we were meeting. This is always the default. Um, yeah, and, and so uh, Dee Dee and I met, and Jack was on the virtual talk I gave on embracing international films as a learning intervention. And Dee Dee, was one of five people in that conversation and um i asked her if she wanted to join the team and she said yeah and so the for for a five day which was really they promoted it as a five day it was actually a, a three week engagement um there's dd there we are former high school teacher. Could you see her coming down the hall looking badass like that? <laughs> there we go. I don't hear you. Okay. There you are, Dee Dee. Hi. Okay. Now we can hear you. Hi. I was, I'd like, I'd okay. like to, yeah, I was, go ahead. I was just introducing you to my brother and oh. uh, just said that you had uh, founded a high school film festival in Ohio that attaches to the Chagrin Falls Documentary right. Film Festival. And uh, so right, exactly. that's your engagement here. Yeah. And this is my brother, John Cavanaugh, who Hi, Dee -Dee. Is, he's a, a middle school teacher in Portland, Oregon, started off in social studies like you, Dee Dee, and is currently oh, a health teacher. So that's, um, I think that that gives you some interesting things to talk about from two perspectives, Johnny. That's, and we'd like to, you to uh, respond as both a health teacher and as a social studies teacher. So and <laughs> there you go. <laughs> language arts teacher and I, Oh, you've done language arts too. Okay. Yeah. Well, good. I well, then have a block that was language arts and social studies. Before that, I had a sixth grade, practically self-contained classroom. So yeah, oh. the middle school has evolved around me over the nice. past quarter of a century. <laughs> in, in a lot of ways. Okay. You, Forgive me for not catching are up. Are you in a public school? Yeah. Yeah, for Portland Public Schools. Nice, very nice. Uh, yeah, I um, <clears throat> I was a public school teacher too. Uh, just okay. frozen there. Well, it'll be interesting to hear what you think then. Absolutely. Well, John, just for a starting question, you know, uh, how have you used have you used film in your one of your classrooms successfully and, and what did that look like uh i've used a, a lot of especially lately in health you used a lot of video there's a lot of um 
a very well made, like super short um, videos to get across health concepts, um, also to uh, give kids a way, especially like sixth, seventh, eighth graders, a way to learn like delicate concepts like involved in sex ed where they're not like getting it from the white haired gent up front, but they like get it from from a variety of voices and, and people maybe that they uh, see as more their contemporary or like the type of person that they would look up to and look to for information. Uh, are, so it sounds like these are not just animated, but live action as well? There's some that are animated, there's some that are live action. Um, at like at a point every quarter, um, seventh graders and eighth graders get in health, in sex ed a how to uh, use a condom. And it can be done by a teacher. And if I'm feeling like, oh, that's just going to like send this class over the edge, there's videos that like from Planned Parenthood and a Planned Parenthood spokesman um, just shows out step by step with um, how to how to use a condom safely and correctly. Yeah, and, so, and, and the kids respond very differently to the guest than they do to you, right? Or yeah, how is that? Uh, well, it, I mean, it depends on the group of kids, but yeah, it's different. It's, I mean, they're used to watching stuff on a screen, but if, like, if, if I was doing a demonstration and to do that, we have a tool that is um, basically a human penis made out of wood and <laughs> putting the condom on it, but yeah, we call it Woody. Yep. That's, uh, <laughs> okay. And, uh, and yeah, for, for some, I mean, you can just kind of sense when the kids, they, when you have like at least one aspect of your relationship is how can we, can we make this teacher a little bit uncomfortable and stuff like that, <laughs> in, in, you know, in a, in a good humored way most of the time. But it, if it's just up on the screen, there's no really way that they can uh, <laughs> like try to try to derail that or, or like get laughter. Uh, they can still try to get laughter from their classmates, but uh, yeah. Uh, but, uh -huh. but then, then classes, I also feel like there's, it's awesome when there's like a certain level of trust between teacher and student to be able to do something like that live and and like and like I have this table the sheet of instructions like seventeen steps and uh and I just have like the kids will read a step and I'll demonstrate it and then they move on to another step and and so it it just depends on the mm. the level of maturity and trust in any given class group yeah okay okay but um other, but other than that like videos. I'm trying to think. Are we uh, like for another for um, um, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs curriculum? There is often like these short six to eight minute videos that kind of show like teenagers in these um, situations where they might be feel uh -huh. pressured or feel curious about substance use or substance abuse. And uh, so, and especially in middle school where they, most of them have not found themselves in a situation like that before. It's, it's probably more of a, a high school thing, or, but it's for some in middle school, it's kind of just like seeing somebody else in an age group that they identify with having to respond to that situation. And it's just like a starting point for conversation, for role plays, for stuff to, um, practice refusal skills and decision making skills okay okay oh good and and that's been successful all right yeah yeah and and definitely the video is and you know so i end up watching these videos like four or five times a day when we're using them and, <laughs> yeah, and they're sure. they're kind of they're kind of silly and kind of dry but the just the fact that it's it's something up on a screen and uh and kind of like a dramatic situation or something like that it catches their interest and the and the sex ed ones are really like kind of fast paced and 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 fun and and really short they just yeah really hold the kids interests and they communicate like a 
pretty direct, simple message most of the time, and, mm. and it's good. So could you imagine um, a film? Uh, well, how, how would you imagine using Screen 360 TV, perhaps, to address um, some of the, your needs for class? I'm thinking about language arts and social studies. Um, uh, I can imagine that we could have films uh, that would address sex ed situations uh, of... Um, yeah, or, or just like adolescence mm -hmm. and... Definitely. Um, pressure situations and um, like so many of the decisions we make are like affect, uh, have a possible effect on our physical or emotional health or even social health, our relationships. So all of those. Um, so then on the flip side, like having like a, a discussion, an online discussion or something like that, that would be something that I would be kind of cautious of because I like having, having a constructive conversation or discussion in um, a classroom is, is kind of a tricky thing. And sometimes it, it like requires a certain protocol or a, enough for the kids to not feel self-conscious about things. And if they were talking like with unknown people or unknown peers, it, it might be daunting to them. It might not, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. um, if it were introduced once and then twice you know, on a on a regular basis uh would you see a value in creating a relationship perhaps with the classroom in a foreign country um i i'm it, i mean i'm putting myself out of my own classroom head and the demands on me as a health teacher with like all um the different curricula and standards i have to address and having one quarter in which to do it and then having whole new groups of kids come in so there's barely what i would say barely time for me to establish a good relationship with uh -huh. the kids um so we're i mean we're definitely still building a relationship by the time the Form comes to an end and they're going to a different enrichment class and I'm getting a new set of students. Mm -hmm. So I basically have them for like uh, 40, between 40 and 45 instructional days. Oh, okay, okay. So like how, how long are your class periods? Like oh, our, our bell schedule is changing this year. I'm not sure, but everything got thrown for a loop with coronavirus. Mm -hmm. um, last last year so around 50 minutes and they could we were going to add an extra period on this year so it was going to go down to like 44 so i'm not but i'm not sure i'm not mm. sure where all that lies mm. everything is mm. kind of in flux with all the changes that have that have happened in the last few months is is there curriculum um or required for cultural literacy in in your school or in in your that you've had to teach um no there's not i don't think so i mean i think cultural literacy would probably be there might be standards for that and this would be something that i suggest that you do is like check state standards for social studies and see because i'm sure that a lot of them a lot of them but there would definitely be in language arts in social studies and those are the two areas that i would see like, like the strongest connection there would be standards instructional standards that would align with um the goals of, sc of screen 360 mm -hmm. and also just kind of like your philosophy and I think that would be, if you haven't like investigated them already, it'd be a helpful thing for you to familiarize yourself with and yeah. kind of 
Yeah. And I was always just looking at the website to, I mean, your website is, is kind of geared at a national audience and international audience as well. So focusing on one state standard set, set of standards for one state might not be the way, but a lot of them are national standards now. Mm -hmm. So um, that could be really helpful to kind of like call out those standards that you think are really applicable. Would you, or do you, when you are um, meeting with colleagues and form, forming curricula and asking, that's a question, do you ask for a particular curriculum? No, I mean, as, as we discussed, it's like we kind of have what's available to us and then we can bring in other things like, and to tell the truth, like the curriculum I have for me, myself in health and, and Didi, this was kind of like a late career change in <laughs> in Oregon. There's a, man, a state mandate that um, all middle schoolers have a quarter of health instruction every year. Oh and um, in Portland, that was not really happening. And they were sort of fudging in their reports to the state. And we got a new superintendent. He's just finished his second year, I believe. So when he came on board, it, the principals were basically told that we can't mess around with this anymore. We have to make sure that they get this instruction. And my principal came to me because I was the only person in our building that had um, certification to teach health. Just to say, <laughs> I need you to be our health teacher. And I was like, ah, great. Uh, but <laughs> I it, need we, you, so put you on the spot, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and it wasn't even like, how would you feel about this? Or, or it explaining, she says, I have you, um, I have you on our schedule next year to, to, to be the health teacher. And I'm, I was just like a deer in the headlights. I, was, I had no response right away. I was kind of, I was angry for a while. But then I, I really started, I, as soon as I got into it, I really enjoyed the health curriculum. And, <laughs> and I had kids finding, you know, questions about drug use and, and even nutrition and sex ed. And they're much more engaged in stuff than, than I had them when they, we were talking about the Bill of Rights or the... Uh -huh. There you go. Uh -huh. I mean, definitely the Bill of Rights. I, I should take that back because that's really, that was part of this, the eighth grade social studies curriculum that they were really interested in. And, oh. and like, but it was, I don't know, it, the, in Portland at least, the social studies curriculum is, is kind of built on, on his, history. Uh -huh. and like on geography or world cultures or anything like that yeah mm. it's at least to help us more relevant right i mean yeah well, that's and good. for each one individually yes you want us to be healthy i mean you want them to be intelligent and and think critically as well but when especially i would think middle schoolers and thinking about their bodies and how they can stay healthy and and beautiful and yeah. Is there a bit of, of, of that? Yeah, <laughs> well, and, and plus they, they also just like, you know, when it comes to like what they eat and stuff like that, and they just like, I know red hot fiery Cheetos are, are not good, good for me, but they taste good. So I'm going to eat them. I don't care. I don't <laughs> care if they're healthy or not. And I, and I just like, all I want to do is make sure that you have the information to make the healthiest decision you can. I just have like this, some line like that. And, yeah. and, it's like, and then you get to choose what to do with that information. But yeah, I, want that's you to, good. I want you to have the knowledge. <laughs> um, do you, when you're, when you're considering curriculum, do you consider uh, a curriculum that might bridge towards advanced placement or international baccalaureate since both of those are offered in Portland high schools? Nope. 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 We have okay. pretty basic health curriculum each and and the curriculum is pretty descriptive. It's pretty well mapped out scope and sequence what the four units are going to be. Um, the, I mean, to, in some of the cases, the lessons are, are pretty scripted and stuff. So I'm not thinking in those lines at all. I'm kind of thinking about, let's make sure that, um, that we're addressing all these standards and I have to kind of like, what, 
in my time frame? What can I use from this lesson? What, what do I have to edit out? Things like that. But um, some of our kids do go to Cleveland, so where there is the IB. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I mean, at that, like, it, notions of AP and IB are, don't really enter into our discussion much at my middle school. Okay. 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 Oh, no. yeah. I wouldn't imagine, I really wouldn't imagine that you would talk about that. <laughs> no, not yet. Yeah. Well, I mean, there was, when they're, are, are you not preparing them for high school in eighth grade? Yeah. Yeah. As best as possible. Yeah. But, um, the, they are. Yeah, we, did have, we did have a principal who was interested in a pre-AP and like, because the kids can get um, up to two high school credits in math. Actually, I think it's now just one is possible, mm -hmm. but up to two in language if, uh, if they're completing classes in middle school. But mm -hmm. in, in other than that, in Portland, I don't know about the rest of Oregon, but middle school curriculum doesn't lead per se to like you're on a track to go into AP English. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Are four no. oh sorry DD go ahead. No I was just going to say that no you, you wouldn't you wouldn't be doing that and not only that you know, as an AP teacher um, I know what that curriculum is and I know how hard it is I know how it, but it's how demanding it is for the students that I would never even want them to even touch it. You know, I mean, it's bad enough that they do take it freshman year. You know, it's like you don't need to take a college course when you're a freshman in high school. Seriously, uh, there's a lot of stress that goes with those courses. Mm -hmm. So, no, I no, I would hope not. I mean, I think parents are already on kids, you know, in the honors track, etc. You know, that's I think there's a lot of stress centered around all this stuff, you know, so. I think middle school, like as far as like screen 360 TV, I would think that if you could find the films and make the connections through some of those films in your social studies classes, in your English classes, even in your world language classes, uh, and maybe yeah. we could find one for health. Uh, maybe we could. It. I think we could actually. We um, could relationship. But, yeah, definitely. Relationship mm -hmm. stories. Oh yeah, yeah. I definitely we could, and I think that. Um, I mean, I think, he, wow, I don't know how often PE shows a film, but I even think that in PE, you could probably, if a teacher wanted to, you know, you could put one in, it would be relevant. I mean, there are, there are certainly documentaries or international films, let's say on soccer, right? Or, you know, some sort of, you know, sure. international sport or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, but not, not, not AP, <laughs> not AP and A3, no. Not AP and yeah. A3. But what about language, John? Uh, do the students have language classes? Um, it is an elective class, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, we have, we have Spanish, and then there's a Russian immersion program that is um, wow. so wow. it's at our school. We, yeah, we have a large um, Russian language um, community in our neighborhood. And, and the Russian immersion program draws kids from from many different parts of town. That's so, cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really? Yeah, you could find that one there, you know, Katie, for sure. We could. Yeah, I would think we could. that that would, yeah, <clears throat> that would be something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. would, oh, and Didi, do you have um, AVID, the AVID program? Yes. So we have a pretty that. strong AVID program at our school. And mm -hmm. that's, that's one of the main ways that we get a lot of kids ready for high school, the demands of high school, Kate. And it's, it's kind of focused at students who are not necessarily like the, the mm -hmm. top academically, like who might be an AP or something like that, but it's kids who um, might come from families where um, they might be the first to graduate high school or the first to go to college right. and but just like really giving them some some core academic skills and academic habits that could when they get to high school like really benefit them and mm -hmm. keep them from feeling like oh I've just run into a wall and right. I'm just gonna stop uh, that's fantastic uh, 
Yeah, that's great in middle school, really. I mean, we have a strong, strong AVID program at the high school, but in middle school, I, my goodness, that's fantastic. Really. What does the acronym yeah. stand for? I've heard of it. Advancement Ad via individual determination. Oh, right. that sounds so great. Yeah, mm -hmm. so love that'd be something to look up a, a little later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, San Diego. It comes out of San Diego originally. Originally. Aha, uh aha. -huh, uh -huh. There's a, <clears throat> also something out of San Diego. It's a, a world geography program too, and I have to find oh. more information about that. Um, um, and that's a, a national drive to get more world geography in high schools. I think as as well so more world geography education uh, in general. So I have to make myself a note to look at that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Johnny, um, how much do you think screen, well, as a teacher, do you have funds to purchase a, a program uh, like Screen 360 TV? No, no, I don't. We basically, teachers could maybe can go to the building principal and advocate for funding for a certain pro program that they think would and they probably would have to demonstrate like a value outside their their own immediate classroom but mm -hmm. more of a school-wide thing um avid does have more discretionary funds just mm -hmm. from the program for being part of that program they do uh, yeah. but so in like in our building before, principal, we had a principal who brought in a program that was called Mind Up and it was mindfulness training for, for students. And so principals have, can, can purchase program or can, can use funding to purchase mm -hmm. programs. Um, teachers, individual teachers don't have that unless they like apply for a grant or something like that. Uh huh, uh huh, okay. Okay. I think we get we get like seventy five bucks to purchase classroom supplies. <laughs> I think I, yeah, I think I heard that from Chrissy too. Our our youngest sister also teaches in public school, and she gets about seventy five bucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Is there a conference that you and your teacher colleagues attend annually where Screen Three Hundred and Sixty TV could present, or? How, how else would you recommend as a way to uh, show your colleagues what Screen 360 TV can do? Um, no, on conference, mm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, no, there's no like annual conference that we go to. We have um, professional development. Okay. We have staff meetings and professional development and stuff um, more like highly concentrated at the very beginning of the year and then like weekly staff meetings and PD time, but that's mm -hmm. often focused on just like um, small PLCs, professional learning communities right. where we like focus, like, I'm not sure. I think this year we might, our, our groupings might be more by grade level, but in the past they've been by subject area. Mm -hmm. um, so I see, yeah. I see. So not so much yeah. reaching outside and, and cross pollinating, but within interesting. Okay. No, I mean, I, I've gone to conferences. So some teachers might go in small groups to different conferences. And now that I'm like sort of the, towards the, the sunset years of my oh, career yes, I'm yes. and, and in the new, in a brand new, classroom well two years old um i'm i've kind of more just like uh, i'm hunkering down and and learning what i can to to best um impact my students but yeah i haven't i was i was more involved in in other things and conferences and professional groups and stuff earlier in my career right right you did national geographic Dee Dee, did yeah. you ever do any of the National Geographic? Uh, no, I, I didn't. I didn't. No, but but you know, I attended a lot of conferences, etc. And what I think what's happened in the last few years is like the budgets are so tight now. It's like 
no one is getting sent to conferences. And, you know, when, when there was money, it was great. You could travel, you know, all over the country, you know, to a conference, but not so. Av Avid's the only one, I think, that pretty much you can send people to a conference, you know. But other than that, the, the yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, you can go to an AP conference, but you would be, you as a teacher, well, you could ask for the funds, et cetera. You know, if there's money, you know, they could send you. But um, no, it, it's unfortunate. And I think after COVID, now it's even going to be worse, you know, with uh, with funding for things like that. So it's mm. it's it's not good. Yeah, it's sad. But it sounds like, John, when you do the grade level thing, that's going to be more interdisciplinary, which will be nice. Yeah, and that's, we're, uh, so my group that was, the enrichment teachers for the past two years so we're not sure where we're going to fit in i think we're we're staying as kind of you know the the hodgepodge um group because we're not we're all three grade levels uh -huh. and, and uh so our little group is not going to change but all the other teachers in the core areas will be will be going to grade level groups yeah uh, i think that you'll I think your group, your I think your group's voice is really valuable because I think you see kids differently. Okay, so you really actually get to know kids a little differently, and so I think your perspective to even the grade level math teachers or whoever is like, you know, I think it's valuable because you could kind of like, well, what about this? Or I see this, or they're thinking about this. Did you know this is going on at home? You know, whatever it is, yeah. you know. But you know, I think that's. It's, that would be huge, I would say, to have your voice. Yeah, and, and we, um, oh, you know, over the last couple of decades, as, as school budgets and, and state education funding has kind of dried up a little bit, we're, we're a fairly small staff, and, and we do, we know each other, other pretty well. So, uh -huh. yeah, I know that I can go talk to, like, my sixth grade teacher group, and, and, hopefully we will still be doing plenty of that mm -hmm. because, yeah i mm -hmm. think uh, those of us who see all the kids right. all three grade levels we will we'll, we'll need to check in with those guys right right <laughs> yeah could we give you um a list of the programs that we're showing so far and for you to consider perhaps a, a pilot maybe even one one screening at the beginning of school. We're looking. We're looking at September seventeenth as a, a possible day. We're we're aiming seventh grade, but also high school. So uh, it could be an event where it's seventh through twelfth grade. It's unlikely that we would get the twelfth grade. So we would focus uh, the film on say fourteen and up. And that's generally how the Berlin Film Festival looks at their, their teenage film. It's 14 and up. So that's almost the, the seventh graders, the, your sixth, seventh, and eighth graders are, are looking forward and it would act like a bridge. Yeah, 14, 14 is like eighth grade. And, 14, and, uh, okay. Yeah. And only some eighth graders, but if that were, and I, we can, that's definitely something we can like talk about and mm -hmm. and think about, but we don't even know what we're going to be doing in the fall yet, Kay. Whether we'll be in a building, whether we'll be at home, like these individual nodes trying to work together and draw kids in and keep them engaged. Um, and yeah. also, we the, our district has a strict policy that any like films have to be have to be accompanied by a parent permission okay split. so that's okay. another thing to yeah, consider. yeah, it would have, yeah easier would it now be go ahead Didi. would it have i'm asking would it have to be vetted the film because you know, i'm thinking about that one film you know that we like so much the is it not federico is it federico oh uh, el Cio de Fabrizio, an argentine film oh and it would be perfect for your sex ed class it really yes. would be it's but I'm so wondering nice. about the age. It's it's perfect. It really is. It's really. I think it's. I think it's pretty harmless. But you are talking about. I mean, it is about you know kids thinking about having sex for the first time. It, it, but it, the, it never happens. It never happens. Okay. Yeah. But just discussion about it and and you know, kind of like them preparing for it, which is it's really funny, but it's touching and 
uh, not touching, it's literally touching. Oh. <laughs> it's really, <laughs> no. <laughs> it is, no, and, but, right. well, it engages parents, the parents' conversation around it, and the yeah. parents also reflecting on their first time that they're really was no one giving them insight to this and that was the response we got from a parent group that that watched it two high school parents yeah. and uh, they said wow it might be really good actually to have something like this that did engage a conversation and and, and they did they did say those parents those interviews did say you know eighth grade they did say eighth grade they did say middle school they did um and also, I think, this, not the saving grace, but one thing that I thought was really important at the end is that the two kids look at each other, the ones who were going to have sex for the first time, and they said, well, we learned the lesson that we should wait. You know, so that was like, so that's why I think it's like, good. And that's, perfect yeah, one, and that's, yeah. That's the, big, <laughs> that's the big overall thrust probably of our middle school sex ed is like, yes, you, almost everybody at some point in their life is going to decide to be sexually active, but at your age, the best the best thing is to wait but right yeah. when, you, when you do choose to be sexually active here's all kinds of information that will right help you, right help you, so, be safe, so help you keep your partner safe and, you're yeah. empowering them to be responsible that's yeah. that's great i think el inicio um engages the converse, conversation and it also i think it's great for parents i mean now that we're going right. to be, online the parents can watch too and it's a wonderful opportunity right, to, right. To, to remove the taboo to bring it into a natural place a natural conversation and that's so huge and and this is what we're looking at now as the benefit of of covid is that it's that families together i know some kids are in difficult family situations um but a, a sharing a film like this, I think, can really engage trust so that independent learning is even stronger, I think. Parents uh -huh. are trusting their, fam their, their students to be independent learners. This is certainly an area where um, they need that trust. And if the trust is there, they're trusted in, in other areas, too. And um, yeah, I think you saw the the parents' response in the Q and A's I sent over. Yeah, it's a nice film. Yeah, it was, of course you could see it. It's a it nice film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I remember you talking about that one before, Kate. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, and it's but, in you know, Spanish. I bet, I bet I could, yeah. Go ahead, Didi. I bet I could find one. I was gonna say I bet I could find a film. I bet, I bet I could find one. Seriously. You know, when I'm looking at all the films, I bet I can find one that would work for for John's class. Awesome. Yeah. And and the whole thing, and yes. And I think uh, John, what we're looking at and we're really being cognizant about is like we're keeping everything to no more, let's say, than 15 minutes of a film, so it's not anything short. long. Right. You know, so this, yeah, right, and something short, that, um, not not. If um, if we are doing online learning if we're returning to school in kind of the same way that we finished this past year um we were doing the instruction basically the lessons were asynchronous so that the kids could access them when mm -hmm. they when their schedules permitted when things at home because they might have been like working around the schedule of a sibling to use the Chromebook that they had at sure. home for and stuff like that. So having like one big event, while we just like, if you can, if, if you can do this kids, this would be, this would be the time, but it would be better to have like the film available that like on a given day where they could access it at um, yeah. whatever time works for them or something. Well, this particular film, El Inicio de Fabrizio, yeah. is available. I've made a playlist, and it's available on the YouTube. And, and uh, I have hopefully uh, marked enough things with Screen360 TV so that it's recognized that this is the repository for Screen360 TV as well. It's just, it was too difficult to move um, all of the content on the Katie Kavanaugh YouTube channel to 
uh, single um, an independent Screen 360 TV um, YouTube channel, and and that we will use, we will build as we grow. Um, but right now, it's on the one dedicated to Katie Cavanaugh, and it's marked with uh, Screen 360 TV. So we could give them a link, and they could use it, and they they'd be able to view uh, synchronously and then come back to you. Yeah, it's a 20 minute film and uh, not all films will be accessible like this because we have to license some films. This one was already existed, existent on the internet. And so um, I curated it. And uh, so it, this one would be accessible and it's, it's a current film, I think 2017, uh, was a, an award win winner at the Berlin Film Festival. And um, so, yeah, and, and and it would be a, a delight, I'm sure, for the filmmaker to learn that his film was being used in such a way and put it up online to uh, make it available like this. Um, I it, reached it's out a to great... the filmmaker. Uh, what, yeah. Just one just a second. I've reached out to the filmmaker. He has not gotten back to me yet, but I will continue to reach mm -hmm. out because, of course, if there was an uh, a synchronous event and we present the film it would be great to have the filmmaker there and uh, then the kids of course connect empathetically to the filmmaker and want to know about his experiences and that's a whole nother depth of the, the conversation Dee, Dee, go ahead sorry mm -hmm. no i was just going to say that I think that uh, it's it's a great intro into, you know, if you're going to start talking about sex ed or whatever, it's a great intro. Kids certainly would you know, be an icebreaker and certainly they would be wide open. Their eyes would be wide open. And the other thing is I think it would be, I think personally, I think I would like to be in the classroom with the kids when they saw this because their reactions are, they're going to be all over the place. You know, it's kind of like uh, subject, you know, the subject matter, I suppose. But yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a fun film. It's, it's cute. I mean, it really is cute. So it's, it's, um, it's, and, it's and it has obviously it has some type. it's done sensitively. Well, sensitively, isn't it? But sensitively to the, the, the kids. And that's right. what I especially right. like about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny too. It's funny. Yeah. It's funny. It's funny about mm -hmm. the, the adults mm -hmm. reflecting on themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cute. I think that's it might work. Yeah, that, and it that's a really good point, John, about the asynchronous and and um, yeah, that's great. So, how? I mean, could you recommend us to the person who's making this that the decisions, and so they could they could even um, call upon us as a resource because we've been testing both internationally and, and nationally for you know, three months and before, really for, for years now, you know, I've been testing this in, in different uh, use cases, but specifically for this one. Um, so, you know, we could also support that thinking. Uh, and I'm also tested with a, a German classroom that had already gone back to school in COVID and they were working with a situation where half the class came in and the desk was spread out and the other half of the class was online and i would see this as a, a valid possibility you just need super strong internet and mississippi uh school districts are doing that now with a mississippi P pbs station has a really great program and that they're working on with zoom so, I mean, yeah, I'd I be happy to consult as well. Um, so, but, uh, like, with whom? I don't, I, I don't know, because I, I, yeah, I guess that would be, a, like, our main decision maker is the principal at our school, and, and he has to, you know, follow the, the, yeah. the state of, of the district. And, uh -huh. but, and but I don't yeah I don't even there's so much uncertainty right now that we're, yeah. we're just we don't know are we going to be going back into our classrooms are we going to be in our classrooms part time are we going to have kids who are there part time split into groups uh -huh. and yeah well they, I know that they're looking at a lot of scenarios mm -hmm. but 
um, and this is what I'm trained in too, is, is pulling people together to carve out what the future can look like and, and, uh, and uh, not worrying about what it's going to look like, but trusting that we can uh, build something. And, uh, but that's, you know, that's starting from scratch with design thinking. Um, I think- how and I, th I imagine, I'm have people doing design thinking uh, Say it again? In, the, in the I imagine that they have people who are doing design thinking in the upper levels of of the school district okay. so I don't but I, I don't know who that is I'm, <laughs> it's, I'm just like one of the people that kind of like okay I'm waiting for you guys to tell me what's going on and how yeah. I'm, how well, I'm well, be pulling sure different do. lessons and and materials and things together that that I use and that I can make up my lessons. Mm -hmm. If you felt it valuable, though, um, we could have conversations that that bring out other insights from our experience. And um, we just came through uh, an intensive um, at, at Stanford working with people who are in the military working on this issue too, or all working on uh, COVID recovery. So, you know, in a 30 minute conversation, we might be able to offer something and, you know, not detract anything. So if, if you made the, con if you made the introduction, no, no harm, no foul. It would only be constructive, I think. Well, I think, so I'm going to toss the ball back to you a little bit. Mm -hmm. I think you should like, <laughs> kind of like take these different ideas because right now like we're talking about like some curricular things that could go with language arts or social studies or even health but then you're also talking about um um like thinking about about schooling and education in the time of COVID-19 and and how you could like help with that and I would and I would say, like, make a like formulate some kind of proposal, and I could I could like certainly introduce you or pass that on to my principal. Mm -hmm. But um, I don't know, I kid. I just I don't, like for that. I don't know if people in the district are looking outward for ideas or if they're coming together and and just saying we we need to figure out how we're doing this based on our experiences past spring mm -hmm. and what we, know, what we know about our kids and uh, okay yeah and someone but, might or might not be looking internationally they might or might not be and so right and, if, if you get a call from somebody who says do you have anyone who, yeah so if they they're looking for somebody who has some international experience but they probably do. You can say it that way. But formulate yeah, a proposal I, and looking I, at the um, the state recommendations. That's something we can certainly do in Oregon. And and look at look definitely look at standards, kid. I think if you can yeah, like couch thing in the language of the educational standards, mm -hmm. then um, that that kind of snaps people's attention. Yeah. A little yeah. Bit. yeah. Are there any journals that you subscribe to, John? No. 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 Okay. Like Edu Week. Edu Week is one online, I guess. Yeah. Okay. 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 Good. Um, you've given us a lot of time. Thank you. It's yeah. Fifty. Uh, do you have any uh, further edu questions? Any uh, questions about Screen Three Hundred and Sixty TV or where we're going, what we're doing? <laughs> any further questions? Um, not, not at this moment. No. Nah. Okay, good. Dee Dee? Yeah, I was just wondering, when, when do you guys start school? So usually we, um, we started school the, the first day after the Labor Day weekend has been when, when students come back and we're oh. back the week before that getting ready. Yeah. Um, 
And then the last couple of years, the district has, has pushed that timetable up so that we're doing that all like a week early or even a little bit more than a week. And yeah. part of that was just for, um, for the standardized testing so that kids would have more, right. more time in the classroom before the, right. before the testing window opened and closed. Mm -hmm. and so we're, we're back in our classrooms in August, which is Portland's hottest month, and September, <laughs> which is second hottest. And we don't have any air conditioning or anything like that. Oh, and, oh my God. Yeah. Oh. But uh, you guys, were you out in May then? We, so we would have finished um, the first Friday in June. Okay. This year. okay. We, but we added on a few days to. Um, mm -hmm because of all the time we missed in with COVID and um, yeah. But now there won't be any snow days, right? I mean, I mean, because if, if you're doing it at home virtually. Exactly, well, that's so true. <laughs> yeah, another one of our sisters, her husband is in the administration of their school district and they basically had all kinds of online curriculum and plans in place for snow days. So they, they kind of hit the ground running when the, when the virus <laughs> first came. <Right. laughs> That's good. Really good. Right. Yeah. It was yeah. interesting. We, we interviewed Scott, or I interviewed Scott, and he said that the teachers direct the content in the class. And, and he says, as the curriculum director, he waits for the teachers to come to him and ask him, and he basically supports. So it's a it's difference in the school district, I guess. Smaller district, yeah. A lot smaller yeah. than they have. Mm -hmm. I think SDK only has at one school at each level, so that oh, wow. it's a lot more responsive. Maybe they have a couple of great schools. I don't know, yeah. but I expect only one. Yeah, yeah. So that, well, that that's the whole thing. The, all the districts, I mean, they can be so diverse, so different. I mean, where you could have, you know, like you said, when you when you have a strong AVID program, that tells you that there's there's some, um, you know, lower social economic, you know, families in the community you know or you know like you said you know, families who've never maybe no one's graduated from high school before the first to go to college or whatever it is and so that you've got different different uh communities for sure so it's, it's different it's different everywhere so mm -hmm. it's uh, have, it's, it's not one it's all that's for sure we have one teacher who is um i think she's high school and who is an avid teacher and she wants to pilot Screen 360 TV in Watsonville. Watsonville. So this is, to get her. Avid has more leeway. Avid has, they're not the same as, you know, Avid doesn't have a curriculum or standards or whatever, not not tight like all the other subject matters do. And they, Avid has more leniency, you know, for sure. Okay. So it's about, it's about empowering, enriching, it, you know, preparing, you know, it's kind of behaviors, it's all kinds of things that goes, mm -hmm. goes into Avid. Okay, that's good. That's good. Glad you were here, Dee Dee. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you, thank you. And thank you, thank Brian. Okay, um, Dee Dee, really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Nice good luck this year. You. Thank you, you too. Thank you. <laughs> we hope the we can help it, you right? out. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Have a nice rest of your summer. <laughs> thank you too. Thank you. Okay, brother. See you later. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.